أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen, we're here again uh, in this Ta'aleen and one of the most important things or one of the beautiful things about this Ta'aleen it is our first Ta'aleen of Ramadan and this is the emphasis and this is the topic of today continuing on the subject matter of Ramadan Inshallah, just a brief review Inshallah, what we went through last week we talked about Ramadan that it is mandatory, that it is wajib for any Muslim that believes in that, in Allah, Allah, Muhammad, Rasulullah, it is mandatory, it is wajib that you fast. It's one of the pillars of Islam. Anyone who leaves it, turns away from it, doesn't believe in it, right? They are a kafir, a disbeliever. So if someone claiming to be a Muslim, but they don't fast, that oh man, I don't fast, or I don't believe in that, or no, nah, I mean, I'm cool with that. They are out of the realm of Islam, right? Because Islam is built on pillars and foundations. Fasting during the month of Ramadan is one of those pillars. If you do not fast during the month of Ramadan, which is now, you are not a Muslim, you are a disbeliever. Okay? We also learned that Ramadan, it's nothing new. That fasting is nothing new. All the prophets of old fasted. Moses fasted. Jesus fasted. Mary fasted. Daniel fasted. Abraham fasted. All of these different prophets fasted. Okay? So this is nothing new. This is just a way to us to reconnect and a way for us to inshallah be close to Allah. We also learned that Ramadan is a month, as Allah subhanahu wa says, so by chance you may be a those who gain taqwa. Okay? So again, Allah subhanahu wa says that Ramadan is a month that you gain taqwa. Right? You gain God consciousness. You fear Him. Right? Also we're told that it is a means of gaining fortan, which means clarity, a criterion between what is right and what is wrong. When you gain taqwa, right? When you gain taqwa, you gain guidance. When you gain guidance, you gain furqan, which is clarity, right? The criterion between what is right and what is wrong. Furqan means the criterion between right and wrong. Allah said that the Quran is muttaqin. It is a guidance for those who have taqwa. And again, the purpose of Ramadan is to acquire taqwa. Right? So if you have taqwa, then you be of those who have the huda from the Quran, which is the guidance, inshallah. We also learned that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. All the revelations of old were revealed during the month of Ramadan at different times, right? Different stages. We learned that the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan. We also learned that Ramadan is a shield, it's a protector. Right? We learned that every day that you fast takes you seven years away from the hellfire. We learn that when you fast, Allah puts a trench in between you and the hellfire. Every time you fast, okay, it takes you farther and farther away from the hellfire. We're also told that the fast, your fasting on the day of judgment, it will plead for you, it will intercede for you, and say, I prevented him from food and drink and all these other things, so today I ask that he be prevented from the hellfire. So fasting is a means to be shielded and protected from the hellfire. We also learned that Ramadan is a burn. During this month, it's hot. You're hungry, right? You feel agitated, but you got to burn. You got to persevere. You got to dig deep to burn all the impurities out your body. One of the brothers had said back in the day that when you go through the month of Ramadan, whatever is inside of you is going to regurgitate out. So whatever you are, whatever is your natural inclination, whatever vices that you have within yourself. This is when it comes out because this is the time that you agitate. This is the time that you don't have the patience. So if you haven't been working on these characteristics during the year, as far as being patient, as far as not being groggy, as far as not cussing, as far as not being impatient, all these things are going to regurgitate themselves during Ramadan because you can't hide it during Ramadan. You can't blame nobody during the month of Ramadan, right? Because you learned that during the month of Ramadan, the gates of paradise is open, the hellfire is closed, and the shed team, the devils, they're locked up during this month. So they can't tempt you, right? When we're talking about the shayateen among the jinn, they can't tempt you. But the shayateen among mankind, they're still devils, human devils, they're still walking on the earth. But the unseen devils, the ones that whisper to you, they're chained up. 
So during this month, the only one that you can blame for your actions and whatnot is your own mouth. Okay? We also learned that during the month of Ramadan, this is a means of forgiveness of all of your sins. Okay, when we say all of our sins, we're talking about the sayyat. The sayyat, these are the minor sins. Okay? There's a difference between sayyat and kabair. Kabair, those are the major sins. Okay? When it becomes, when we're talking about the major sins, these are the ones that Allah threatens with the hellfire. These are the ones that Allah threatens with um, the curse. These are the ones that Allah threatens with the wrath. Okay? These are the ones such as um, fornication, adultery, sorcery, magic, right? Khamer, intoxication. These are the major sins, right? Sodomy. These are the major sins. These are the things that you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to make tawbah to Allah for Allah. But all the things underneath that, lesser than that, during the month of Ramadan, all of these things are forgiven without you even asking. But the things that are major, the kabahir, you have to ask specifically. You have to state specifically what that sin was that you did. That only you and Allah knows what you did. Ask specifically for repentance from that deed and make the conscious decision to stop it, don't go back to it, and increase in your deeds. And inshallah, today we'll talk about how do we fast? How do we fast? The first thing is that we must understand that when we fast, we must have niyah. Niyah means intention. Rasulullah so, so said everything is based on intention. You will get what it is that you intended. Whatever your intention, that's what you're going to get. So you must have the niyah, you must have the intention to fast during the month of Ramadan. Okay, Rasulullah so, so said there is no Ramadan without the niyah. Right? No, no, no Ramadan without the niyah, it is not accepted. Okay, now this intention could be before Fajr, it could be before Ramadan started, or Allah fifty seven my fast. Right? However you want to word it, but make the intention to fast. Or Allah please set my fast for the thirty days. Or Allah please accept, you know, whatever you want to voice. But Allah please accept my intention to fast and my intention is to fast for you. Okay, so you must have the intention. We must also understand that Ramadan or the fasting of Ramadan begins from the time of Fajr to Maghrib, okay? It begins from Fajr to Maghrib, okay? And Allah says in the Quran, in chapter 2, verse 187, this is the Dalil to show that you fast from sun up to sundown. Allah says, Allah says, so Allah states, I will be the day and eat and drink until it becomes clear to you, right, the white thread from the black thread. And after that, continue your fast until the night time. So in this ayat, Allah says, and eat and drink until it becomes clear to you the white thread from the black thread. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahabas, they took this literally. So one of the Sahabas said that he stayed up all night with a white thread and a black thread waiting to see, to, he could tell the difference between the white and the black, right? And so the news got back to the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said it doesn't mean that. The white and the black means the whiteness or the blackness of the fudger when the crack Okay, when Fajr comes in, there's a crack in the sky that makes a, di a differentiation between night and day. It's a crack, okay? That's why Fajr means the crack of dawn. Fajr means the crack of dawn. So again, that's why it's very important that we understand that when you read ayahs of the Quran or verses from the Quran, we can't just bank on our understanding of what we think it means, right? That's why Rasulullah said, now these were the Sahabas that were around the Prophet Sallallahu and they took the ayat literally, oh, the black thread and the white thread, so let me stand up and see. And he told them, no, it doesn't mean that. That's why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who explains the Quran. Allah Subhanahu said, they're ready to send you Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that you may explain to mankind the meaning of the Quran. That's why tafsir is very important. Tafsir is commentary and explanation of the Quran. So the law tells us that you can eat and drink until the white and the black thread becomes manifested to you. So thus, when it becomes fudger time, that's when you stop eating and drinking, right? Then Allah says, 
and you continue to fast until the lane. You continue to fast until Maghrib. Okay, so fasting is from the time of Fajr until the time of Maghrib when the sun sets. Now, some people would say, well, I woke up late. Like, for instance, today's my birthday school. Fudger came in at 4.54, 4.55, something like that. When Fudger comes in, whatever the calendar states, whatever it says, right? Because a lot of us are not trained to go outside and see the break in the sky and all that. We're not trained. We haven't done that before. So we use these calendars, inshallah, as an estimation. So Fudger comes in at 4.54. When Fudger comes in, that means it's time to stop eating, stop drinking. That means you got to get up in apt amount of time before that time comes if you want to eat your sahur, which we're going to talk about later on. Okay? It doesn't mean that because that masjid, after about, we pray fudger at 515, right? Although we pray fudger at 515, that doesn't mean that fudger didn't come in already. Fudger's already been in for 15 minutes. Okay? So the beginning of fudger is when you start the fast. Fudger can last for about an hour and 15 minutes. So before it comes in at 4.54, it'll last all the way to uh, almost like six, six something, 16. You have that much time to make fudger. But that doesn't mean that fudger, that I can eat all the way until 16. Okay, some people try to get away and try to play word games. Well, it says until fudger. I didn't pray fudger yet, so that means I can still eat. That's playing with the game. It doesn't mean that. It means when fudger comes in, that's it. Just because you didn't get, it, get up on time to make fudger, it doesn't matter. You still got to stop eating. Some of the scholars say that it is wise to give yourself a grace period. Right? If Fudger comes in at uh, 4.54, you should give yourself at least about 4.50 that you stop everything. So maybe you want to clean your mouth, you want to brush your teeth, and whatnot, because it's mafro. It's, it's not light. Right? It's displeased that you brush your teeth during the days of Ramadan. That which is permissible to use is the miswap. But to use toothpaste with the chemicals and stuff in it, it's my proof that we shouldn't use that. We should use miswrap. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he used to use miswrap during the month of Ramadan and there's nothing wrong with it. Okay? So give yourself a five minute grace period. You want to eat all the way to five or uh, four fifty five. You still got stuff in between your teeth, you got meat in your teeth, you got whatever seeds in your you now you're getting ready to stop fudging. Then you eat those seeds or that meat that's in your your your, your teeth. Right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Eating during your salat breaks your salat. So you can't eat. Ain't no eating in the salat. Ain't no chewing gum in the salat. Ain't no sucking on candy in the salat. Okay? So give yourself a five minute grace period, inshallah. Okay? And you want to follow the sunnah, what did the Prophet Sallallahu did? He used the miswak. So inshallah, we should get a miswak because that's the sunnah anyway. There's much benefit in the miswak. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, if I did not think that it would be a burden for my ummah, I would have made it mandatory for my Umar to use the miswak before every salat. And there's many blessings in the miswak. Why right? it cleans your mouth, it purifies your mouth, it, it helps your digestive system, it helps your metabolism. Uh, it's pleasing to Allah, it's pleasing to the angels, right? And you're forgiven of certain sins for making miswak. The Prophet some of saying in the hadith that the one who makes miswak before the salat, he gets 70 times more blessing than the one who didn't use miswak. So you see brothers using miswak all the time before the salat. Is because there's certain how we use inshallah. And during Ramadan, we should use the misread as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is the suhoor. Suhoor. Okay? The word suhoor comes from the word sahara, which means night or blackness, right? Or darkness. The word suhoor also comes from the word sihr, which means magic, like black magic. So sihr or suhoor, they come from the same word. Suhoor means blackness of night. Right, that you take this meal in the blackness of the night. Okay? So, Anas, Begin reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Take the suhoor before the dawn. Take the suhoor before the fajr. For there is blessing in it. Right? So, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized that we should make the suhoor or we should take the suhoor. It's not mandatory that we do it, there's no sin if we don't do it. Right? But we understand that there's blessing in it. What type of blessings? Allah Allah. Blessings to make us make it through the day so that we won't be hungry. Allah Allah. There's barakah in it. There's blessing in it. So if we want them barakahs, we want them blessings, inshallah, we should take the suhoor. And by following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, some of us, This is a thing that differentiates us between the Jews and the Christians. We have a suhoor. They don't have a suhoor. Right? 
we have a method or, or a mechanism in which we eat before you know we start the fast, right? All other religions don't do that. So this makes us different than others. This is our sunnah, and this is something that makes us uh, unique. So inshallah, sahur. So sahur is the meal that you take before the fast begins. Rasulullah so I'm saying, even if it's just with a sip of water, take something, right? Some people get up and I'm not hungry, I don't want to eat nothing. It doesn't mean make a whole big old seven course meal. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that. Rasulullah so I'm saying, even if it's just with a sip of water, take something for the sahur, for this baraka in it. So you can take water, you can take dates, right? And when you take the dates, it should be an odd number, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. As long as it's an odd number, right? You can take something sweet, watermelon, fruit. If you want to eat, you can make something. Yes. How can it have to be an odd number? Because that's what the Prophet said. That's it. Okay? Even the things that we don't understand, even the things that we can't comprehend. Well, why this? Well, why that? Because when Rasulullah said it, once he said that, then what do we say? Submit or not, wa'ata'ana. We hear, we obey. Okay? We don't question. Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad some of the guidance. His guidance is to teach us. So whatever he said, that's it. Even if we can't comprehend it, even if we don't understand it. But well, why is it? Well, why is that? Well, why? Well, so Allah some of said Who did he get it from? He got that knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So therefore, everything that the Prophet said is revelation. Also, the Prophet Muhammad some of said, be different. The difference of our fast. The difference of our fast and the fast of Ahl al Kitab is the Suhoor, as we just said, the thing that differentiates between us and the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, is the Suhoor. Also, the Prophet Muhammad said, Allah and the angels send sunny, send peace and blessings upon those who take the Suhoor. Okay, so there's Baraka in it, there's blessings in it. Were being different than the Jews and the Christians. And then Allah said that through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that those who take the Sahur, Allah and the angels send sully, send blessings, send peace and blessings upon the ones that take it. So this is also another uh, beautiful blessing that Allah and the angels, they start praising you, they bless you, they ask Allah to bless you, inshallah. During the month of Ramadan, when we don't eat and we drink, we don't drink, it means no food. Or no drink, no water, no coffee, etc. There are some uh, different sects that make you think that it's okay to drink water, or okay to drink coffee. I've seen some brothers that be fasting or they drink coffee. But how do you fast? No, I'm fasting, I'm just drinking coffee. That's not fasting. Okay? So in Islam, no drink, no water. We're not like the Christians where we just eat fish Friday. Okay? It says no, nothing to eat at all, we don't eat nothing. No water, no nothing. Okay? No sip of water, no nothing. In the event that you eat or drink by accident, right? Means that you didn't, you're not conscious of it. Not that, oh, it's, I'm gonna eat this with the oh, stop the line. No, but you really did not remember, but you really forgot that you were fasting. Once you remember, oh, you're supposed to stop. If it's something, spit it out, whatnot, but continue your fast. If it wasn't intentional. Right? When Rasulullah said, that is just a blessing from Allah subhanahu to give you some food and drink. Okay? If you didn't do it intentionally, you really sincerely forgot. Right? Man, I forgot. Right? You ate, but you sincerely forgot. You seriously didn't have the intention to eat. Then you spit whatever's out in your mouth, water, whatever it may be, stop doing it, and you continue your fast. There's no reason to make up the fast. There's no reason to repent for it. It was an accident. Okay, as long as it was not done intentionally. 